Heaven is said to be a place of eternal happiness and bliss, but what if it's actually a trap? According to a secret gospel banned from the Bible, heaven is nothing like what you've been told. From the rebellion of Lucifer to the deceitful intentions of God, we'll uncover the sinister trap that's been hidden from humanity for centuries. This information will challenge everything you thought that you knew about the afterlife. The Gospel of Thomas is an ancient text that the church deemed as blasphemous, and it holds the key to unlocking a a deeper understanding of the nature of reality and the true path to enlightenment. We're going to delve into the hidden teachings of Jesus and explore the cryptic words that reveal a shocking secret about heaven that the church doesn't want you to know. Before we explore the mysteries that this banned gospel reveals, you need to know something about heaven and Lucifer. But first, make sure to hit like and subscribe to elevate your viewing experience to celestial heights. Now, you probably already know that heaven is described as a realm of absolute and eternal perfection. But could such a place actually exist? Think about it. Doesn't it something seem a little off about that? Almost too good to be true? After all, if it was perfect, why would Lucifer the Lightbringer, who's described by the Bible as the wisest of all the angels, lead a revolt in heaven? Lucifer was more intelligent than any human, after all, and he believed that a revolt was necessary. Is there actually something sinister lurking beneath the surface of this so-called eternal paradise? See, by rebelling against God in heaven, Lucifer committed the first sin, and this connection between sin and heaven is critical. Heaven is described as a place where it's impossible to sin and everyone worships God for eternity. Revelations 21:27 says, But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false. Now, this is all important to know to be able to understand what is revealed in the banned Gospel of Thomas. But ask yourself, why does sin exist in the first place? Why does God allow sin at all? Well, it's taught in Christianity that sin exists so that humans have the possibility of choice. Without free will, individuals wouldn't be able to choose between good and evil, and therefore wouldn't be able to sin. See, in this view, sin is seen as a direct result of the exercise of free will. And remember the story of Adam and Eve? It's often explained in Christianity that God placed the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden so that Adam and Eve could have free will by choosing to disobey God by eating from the forbidden fruit. And remember that Lucifer in the form of the serpent was the one who told Eve to eat from the tree. According to Christianity, sin is tied to free will. If sin doesn't exist in heaven, then there would be no opportunity for individuals to make choices that are not in line with God's will. So if it's impossible to sin, or at the very least, anyone who does is immediately cast out, then that means that there is no free will in heaven and freedom doesn't truly exist. Heaven is a realm without freedom, where a tyrannical God demands eternal subjugation and worship. Does a realm without freedom of choice and eternal worship sound like heaven to you? What kind of God demands eternal worship? a true God wouldn't have need for worship. The 19th century German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche said, I cannot believe in a God who wants to be praised all the time. Lucifer led a revolt in heaven against a cosmic dictator and fought for freedom. Lucifer, in the form of the serpent, told Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge so that she and Adam could become free and even told her that they could become like God. Now, do you see the difference between Lucifer and God? God demands eternal worship and obedience while Lucifer fights for freedom and told Adam and Eve that through knowledge they could become like God. Yet the church condemns Lucifer as evil. But what if I told you that Jesus agreed with Lucifer? Let me explain. Lucifer's concept of freedom and becoming like God holds the key to unlocking a higher consciousness and finding heaven right here, right now. The Gospel of Thomas, banned from the Bible by the powerful and feared for its unorthodox teachings, speaks of an entirely different concept of heaven. The concept of freedom and becoming like God promoted by Lucifer is found in the secret teachings of Jesus contained in this gospel. See, in this gospel, Jesus teaches that heaven is not a place that one goes to after death, but rather a state of being that can be achieved in this life 
through self-knowledge and reaching a higher consciousness. And heaven can be found in the present moment right now in this world and all around us. In saying three of the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, if your leaders say to you, look, the kingdom of heaven is in the sky, then the birds will be there before you. If they say that the kingdom of heaven is in the sea, then the fish will be there before you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you and it is outside of you. Christ is saying that any religious leaders who say that heaven is in the sky or in the sea or after you die or anywhere else other than in you and around you are liars. Why did the church hate and fear this gospel? Because it calls them out as liars and jeopardizes their control and power over the masses by destroying the orthodox view of heaven. The traditional concept of heaven is a trap that can be used as a tool for manipulation by religious leaders by coercing their followers to obey strict laws during this life so they can achieve the reward in heaven in the afterlife. I was born in a strict Christian household and know exactly what damaging effects the idea of heaven has on the psyche. Friedrich Nietzsche believed that the traditional Christian concept of heaven, with its promises of eternal life and reward for good behavior, were used to control and oppress the masses by promoting a slave morality, meaning a slave-like mindset. Nietzsche argued that this promise of eternal reward in heaven was used to justify suffering and oppression in this life and to discourage individuals from challenging authority. In other words, as long as the masses were focused on an eternal reward in the afterlife, they wouldn't feel the need to rise up against those who were oppressing them in this life. By promising a reward in the afterlife, religious leaders can use the idea of heaven to control their followers and maintain power. In saying 77 of the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, I am the light that is over all things. I am all. From me all came forth, and to me all attained. Split a piece of wood, I'm there. Lift up the stone, and you will find me there. This saying emphasizes that the divine is all around us and inside of us. Heaven is not a place of eternal worship, but a higher form of consciousness that we can attain through self-knowledge that's waiting to be unlocked within us. The Gospel also says that we are divine beings and suggests that we can attain the same level of spiritual enlightenment as God, that is, God consciousness. In saying 50 of the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, If they say to you, where have you come from? Say to them, we have come from the light, from the place where the light came into being by itself, established itself, and appeared in their image. If they say to you, is it you? Say, we are its children, and we are the chosen of the living Father. This understanding of heaven, the emphasis of divine light, and the potential for humans to become like God, aligns with the idea of freedom and empowerment, much like the story of Lucifer the Lightbringer, who rebelled against a cosmic tyrant, fought for freedom, and told Eve that she and Adam could become like God. It also destroys the oppressive, traditional view of heaven, which, as Nietzsche pointed out, is used as a system of control control by religious leaders. But the concept of heaven has another destructive effect. Nietzsche also believed the idea of heaven would lead to a stagnation of the human spirit and the suppression of the will to power and human potential. The will to power, according to Nietzsche, is the fundamental drive of human nature to overcome limitations and, when it's used optimally, it can result in the achievement of goals and becoming the best version of oneself. Nietzsche believed that the human spirit needs to be constantly challenged and growing and that an eternal afterlife would prevent this from happening. Why? Because if you're focused on an afterlife, you're not going to be focused on this life. You're going to just try to get through it while you look forward to heaven. Nietzsche used the term life deniers to refer to those who rejected this life and tried to escape from it in heaven. He called them life deniers because rather than embracing life, they seek to escape from the struggles and challenges of life rather than embracing and overcoming them. In other words, the concept of heaven traps people by preventing them from becoming their true selves since they're focused on heaven rather than becoming the best versions of themselves in this life. Lucifer rose up in heaven against God and fought for freedom. Friedrich Nietzsche rose up against the idea, the concept of God and heaven. 
Even though Nietzsche hated metaphysics, it's mind-blowing to see how similar, at least in spirit, Nietzsche's view of heaven was to that of Jesus in the Gospel of Thomas, who said that the kingdom of heaven isn't anywhere except within you and around you. Nietzsche said, the kingdom of heaven is a state of the heart, not something that comes upon the earth or after death. The kingdom of God is not something one waits for. It has no yesterday or tomorrow. It does not come in a thousand years. It is an experience within a heart. It is everywhere. Even though they differed on the metaphysical interpretation, Nietzsche and Jesus in the Gospel of Thomas promoted a similar view of heaven that could have a positive effect on humanity. Now compare that to the traditional concept of heaven. Not only is it harmful to individuals, but it's destructive to the world. It can be used to justify violence and war, such as through the belief that dying for Christ will guarantee a place in heaven. And by focusing too much on the promise of an afterlife, people neglect their responsibilities and obligations in their present life, like contributing to their communities and working to improve the world. After all, why would you work hard to improve the world when it's considered to be a place of sin and your focus is on heaven? Instead Instead of focusing on reaching heaven after we die, we should be working to create heaven right here by improving ourselves, our communities, and the world. The secret teachings of Christ in the Gospel of Thomas is about realizing through self-knowledge that you are divine and the kingdom of heaven is all around us. We just need to bring it into being through transforming ourselves, reaching a new consciousness, and building a better world. Of course, the stories in the Bible, they're just stories. They didn't actually happen. But Nietzsche is pointing out how destructive the idea of heaven can be through oppressing individuals, limiting their growth, and damaging the world. Nietzsche, Lucifer, and Christ in the Gospel of Thomas all rejected the traditional view of heaven and shared the belief in the importance of self-transformation and knowledge. Nietzsche emphasizes the idea of becoming the best version of yourself through self-overcoming and self-creation, and this idea of self-transcendence aligns with the message of Lucifer, who fought for freedom and encouraged Adam and Eve to seek knowledge and become like God. And similarly, Jesus in the Gospel of Thomas teaches that we are divine and the kingdom of heaven is within us and can be attained through self-knowledge and reaching a higher consciousness. So don't look to a God in the sky. You are God. Don't look to a heaven after you die. Our kingdom is within and all around us, and we are here to actualize it. So what do you think? Do you agree? Tell me in the comments right now. I'll be reading them. Check out my other video called Jesus Christ is Lucifer. And hey, my channel is about spreading knowledge to create a new humanity and a new earth. So hit like and subscribe to help the algorithm spread this around. And if you feel like that you've learned something or ever gotten something from my videos, join my Patreon community and you'll get exclusive access to secret videos, weekly hidden live streams, and our private Discord server the Citadel. When you become a member on Patreon, you'll be directly supporting me and allowing me to continue to create valuable content. And you can also support by becoming a member on YouTube by hitting the join button right below this video.